What's up everybody? This is Adam with Three Wolf Productions and this is my brand new 2018 Jeep Wrangler JL Unlimited Rubicon. I bought this Jeep a couple weeks ago, brand new, stock, right off the factory line. So far I love it. Um, I've only had the opportunity to take it on some mini trails, some basic trails, just dirt roads, maybe some inclines. That's about it. Nothing rock, no rock crawling yet, nothing serious. Anyways, today we're going to do the first off-road mod that I think, in my personal opinion, even though, and it may be completely wrong because I'm a complete noob, I want to do that front bumper winch combination. And for me, that's super important because I know I'm going to be on the trail by myself a lot. I don't have a lot of buddies out here. I'm new to this area. I'm gonna be wheeling about myself. I need to be able to get out of trouble uh, when it when I inevitably get into it because I'm just that kind of guy. I definitely need to replace this plastic bumper. Today, we got Warren helping us out with a front bumper, skid plate, and a new winch. And it's super crucial because in a few short weeks, the guys and I are gonna be heading to Utah for our first series, which is Wolfpack Expeditions Utah. Look for links coming up shortly. We're headed to Utah. We're gonna do some camping, some off-roading, some overlanding. It's gonna be amazing. Really excited about it. But to make sure that we get out of there safe without scratches and alive, we need to replace this bumper and obviously do some more things that'll be coming down the, the road for the Jeep. Super excited about it. We got some great equipment to throw on here. Let's get you into the garage and show you what we have. Shut up and sit down. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I know they say money can't buy happiness, but buying all this was a little bit painful, but it makes me pretty happy right now. So as you can see, we got the worn front bumper right here, the worn winch up that way. We got our skid plate right here and some other uh, assorted worn items. I'm super excited about, I'll talk more about those later. Um, and if you're asking about what's up in this region, don't tell anybody, but that is my Icon suspension system come, uh, that just came in. So we're gonna put that on later. So on top of the Jeep parts, I got some other things. I've admitted that I'm a noob to this Jeep life. It's my first Jeep, never done much off-roading. Don't have all the tools to even install this stuff. So I had to go out and get that stuff. So you'll see, I got a floor jack. I got some impact sockets. I've got my uh, socket kit and I've got jack stands. So just the basics that I think I'll need to get this job done. I'm sure I'm missing some stuff, but we'll find that out together. Let's see if I did a good job forecasting what I'll need to get this job done. This looks like a statue behind me. I don't want to tear it down because it looks so beautiful, but I'm like a kid on Christmas. I got to tear into these boxes right now. So let's get it all unboxed and I'll show you what it looks like. Well, we finally got it all in box. I need a little bit of assistance from my buddy Hudson here. Good boy, Hudson. When we got the boxes in, I was super excited, but now seeing it all in box and in its glory, it's just beautiful. So while Hudson checks this out, let's take a look at what else Warren sent us. First thing is the Warren Medium Recovery Backpack, but we'll take a closer look at this later. In the background, you'll also see the Warren 10S Platinum Winch, and it's wireless remote, along with a chrome worn fair lead. And the beast in the back is the worn elite front bumper for Jeep JL, along with the skid plate. Oh yeah, baby, real nice. Uh, this is a little awkward. How about we just get this on the Jeep? All right guys, so the first thing we have to do is remove these little clips from the uh, fascia here between the front grill and the front bumper. You'll see it's just as simple as getting a flathead screwdriver in there and popping it out. No big deal. Oh, just drop that one. That's great. Okay, now this is just pop right off. Okay. Oh, there's more fascia. I didn't even see it, guys. I thought there was just two pieces of fascia. I mean, two, two pins here. There's more. And there's that one. Ooh, look at all that. Now, 
the faster she's pop right off. And there it is. Okay, so now we have some plastic push clips we need to re uninstall from the factory skid plate, or what they call a skid plate, that's a piece of plastic. So there's a bunch of these I need to remove, so let's get to that. One, that's it. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Whoa, Jesus. There we go, finally. All gone. What's up, buddy? There's also two bolts holding the skid plate to the bumper, so let's see. Let's get a look at that. As you can see, Hudson likes to help a lot, okay? Anyways, we need an eight millimeter socket to get this skid plate off. Okay, so hopefully we got all the bolts off, we got all the plastic pieces off, we should just be able to pull this uh, skid plate right off. Oh, look at that. Skid plate off. All right, so now we're going to remove the OEM skid plate support uh, from, hey Hudson, what's up buddy? Uh, from the frame, we're not gonna be reusing this, so we'll just toss it. Hey buddy, I gotta get to the bolt here, okay? There we go. OEM skid plate support, off. Then you'll want to disconnect the wire harness from behind the front bumper on the passenger side. So we got the wire harness disconnected for the fog lights. Now we need to get the eight bolts connecting the front bumper to the frame rails. Now there's going to be two bolts on each side of the frame rails and it's definitely going to require an extension and a deep socket. And we're using an 18 millimeter socket for this. All right, we're going to do this old school style. I don't have the appropriate uh, set up for my impact wrench to get that deep into my front bumper. So I'm stuck using hand tools um, and it is going to wear me out doing this. So breaking off these, we're going to go old school style to break off these bolts. All right, so my tools have slipped off the uh, bolts I'm trying to break off of this guy and uh, can already tell that I'm fixing a hurt a finger so I need a little bit of protection just in case you guys can call me a wuss or a pansy or whatever you like to call me but I like to keep all my skin oh my goodness of my existence. My arms feel like jello, but we can move on. Now it's time to just remove the bumper. There we go. Ah. All right, there she is. This is super awkward and kind of heavy. So let's get it put on the table. Okay, so we got the front bumper off. Now it's time to take off the factory LED fog lights because I'm definitely reusing them. So I got to get these two plastic covers off and then remove the fog lights underneath them. So let's get that started. <laughs> All right, I got the plastic covers off. Now you're gonna use a 9 30 seconds uh, socket to get the OEM fog lights out. I do have the upgraded LED lights on my Jeep, so definitely wanna use them over, um, definitely wanna reuse them, I should say. So I don't have to buy a new set. I've been very happy with them thus far. Without at a black bear on the roads late at night with no lighting and they did a really good job lighting up the streets, so I'm very happy with them. Okay, so we are done with the factory bumper. I'm gonna put this to the side. All right guys, so I've run into my first major issue. Uh, so far, the warning instructions have been great, super clear, awesome. I have them right here. Yes, everybody that does these videos uses these instructions. We all don't just magically know where everything goes, right? Anyways, the instructions say attach the LED housing to these brackets. All good and fine, right? 
The problem is, if you look at this picture, oh, that's probably bad. Look at this picture, there's only two holes on these brackets. But these brackets have one, two, three, four holes. And the other issue is that these brackets show the LED connecting at the top two holes, right? But this bracket, when you try to do that, tell me where these connect. Nope, those holes don't line up there. Let's try the other side. Nope, doesn't line up at all there either, right? The only place I could see is that they would line up here. But this is where they, where they, the warning instructions say to connect the halogen lights, right? So what gives, guys? I mean, that's pretty frustrating. So now I'm playing a guessing game. I can't call Warren right now because it's Sunday. They don't, their technical line isn't open, which I understand, but ah, this is frustrating. So I'm going to make a judgment call. I know that the uh, LEDs are supposed to be uh, this orientation when they were on the stock bumper. So I'm just going to go with that. And I'm just going to use what uh, the halogen light mounts to mount them and we'll see what happens. The instructions say that we need to trim off these two tabs off of my LED light housing. Um, these are plastic, or are they? Yeah, they're just very tough. It's very tough plastic. I'll take a Dremel tool to it. Hopefully it works out. I've never used a Dremel. And when I looked over these instructions and saw that I have to do some cutting, it really made me nervous. So this is gonna be a learning experience for all of us. So hopefully I don't die. But I do have my uh, old faithful safety glasses here just in case something goes wrong. Fingers crossed. It's my first cut. It's kind of messy, but actually I'm pretty happy with that. All right, guys, we did all the trimming. Now we just need to connect these LED lights to these brackets. We got these little tiny pieces of, of hardware that we're using. M4 uh, size, so see how this goes. Finally. Now you'll want to install the LED and bracket onto the inside of the front bumper, making sure everything's nice and snug. All right, so we got the light, uh, fog lights installed. Mechanically, now I gotta get this wiring harness out of here. Use this little trim tool to get this stuff out of here. So it seems that the wiring harness, even though I unclipped all the visual points I can see, wraps in and around underneath this piece of metal right here. I can see some of the clips down here, but I can't really get to them. So it seems like I may have to pull this whole cover off. Okay, it's definitely coming apart. Come on, I gotta get this last hook off of here. Oh, there we go, okay. Oh, finally got that front bumper cover off. All right, now we can get the rest of this harness off of here. Harness for the fog lights, here we go. Now just attach the wiring harness to the back of the LED headlights and secure it to the bumper using zip ties and the push pieces. What we're doing next is we're inserting these bolts up and under through these slots. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is probably the most frustrating part of the build I've encountered thus far. What I didn't realize at the time was if I would have done this before putting in the fog lights, this would have gone much, much easier. Don't be like me, be smart instead. So my Jeep came with a plastic bumper, so I don't have the extra skid plate bracket used by the steel bumper group, if you got the steel bumper group for the JL. So Warren has provided what they call a frame doubler bracket that I need to put on, on both frame rails. And essentially, I'm guessing it just adds some reinforcement to the frame where, frame, to the frame rails, can't talk. And this is where we'll be also be attaching the winch attachment bracket. So pretty straightforward. 
Next thing, you're going to want to cut off about half an inch of your driver's side frame rail. This is to make room for the 10S Platinum winch. Now this winch is pretty large and you may not need to do this for all winches. Pay attention to your instructions. You can see the white line I drew as my guide for what I need to cut. Alright, well, that's unfortunate. So, my Dremel tool went out of battery power. Forgetting to charge your Dremel or your battery powered tool is leaving me stuck at this point. Um, so, let's move on to something else while that battery recharges. Alright, so while we're waiting on that Dremel tool to finish charging, we're going to connect these winch plate brackets. So, interesting thing, two holes to three holes, and the instructions don't tell me which set to attach to. So, I'm going to make a judgment call, and knowing that I'm installing a Xeon winch, which is super wide, which hence why I have to cut my frame rails, I'm just going to go to the widest setting and hope that works out. Alright, so these are not the easiest to put on. Not a lot of uh, finger room here. Uh, I don't know how, how I'm gonna get in there to torque this. It's pretty tight. I guess that's uh, another future atom problem I'll have to figure out along the way. But they're both on loose like the instruction says so that I will tighten them down when I attach, when I mount the bumper and attach them to the doubler plates that are also hanging loosely on the frame. So uh, let's keep going. I think I did it guys. I think it's good. It's not the cleanest cut, but I'll take it. All right, let's see if I can grind this thing down, make it a little bit prettier. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. That looks like crap, but I think it's gonna do the job. Let's do a winch size test real quick. There we go. So I tried this before and it didn't fit. Now, seems like it'll barely fit in there, so we might have done the job. I need to make sure I envelop this thing in paint to protect it so that it doesn't corrode over time. All right guys, so now before we put the bumper on, I'm gonna install the uh, skid plate attachment brackets. So these go to the same, to the frame rails, exactly where we put the doubler brackets as well, but now on the outside figure to talk a little bit about why I uh, chose the worn winch or the worn, uh, worn bumper and I really want something to go that goes well with the worn winch because I knew I was going to get a worn winch. Everybody told me if you're going to get a winch it's got to be worn. Um, so I figured I might as well match it up with the worn bumper, right? Secondly, a lot of people talk about full width versus mid width versus stubby bumpers. I know it's gonna go overlanding a good amount in this vehicle. And when you're out there in those desolate remote areas, you wanna be protected. And though I may like the way the mid width or the stubbies look better, um, first off, I thought this worn bumper looked great to car going by. Second, I want a little bit more protection on, for my wheel wells. If I hit something on one of the, in front of the wheels, I'd rather hit my bumper than my tire or my wheel or God forbid suspension part. Um, so just a little bit more added protection. Maybe it doesn't make any sense, but my mind did at the time. You know what guys, I just made a rookie mistake. Um, I just realized that these are supposed to go the other way. So this end, this hole goes underneath the frame rail. So this hole on the other side. So just flip it, keep, obviously you're attaching here, but just flip it around. Don't make the same mistake I did. Now for the fun part. All that's left is to attach the fair lead to the front bumper, then find someone to help you out and lift and install the front bumper onto the front of your Jeep. Look at that. Like butter. Yeah. Woo! Now torque down the six bolts that attach your bumper to your Jeep and your bumper is secure. Oh, all right. We got the winch set in there, now we just gotta bolt it down. I'm praying that these bolts are easier to get to or easier to install than some of the other ones because worn, I can see why their systems work so well because they maximize space so perfectly. And I love it because it's so efficient. Everything's packed so tightly, but man, does it make for a tough install. I'm having a really hard time getting to some of these bolts. I'm praying that these uh, 
nuts and bolts I have to put in on from underneath the bumper, actually inside and underneath the bumper, are fairly easy to install. So let's see. I think I'm doing it, guys. I just had to sacrifice the skin on my hands to the winch gods. Sun's killing me now, guys. Uh, so Warren says torque these to 35 foot pounds. That's what I'm about to do. Okay, so we need to put this good plate on this sucker. Well, let's see how this goes. So it says to first connect these bottom holes to these bottom brackets. Let's see how that goes. All right, I need your help here. Okay, what can I do? I need you to lift, if you could help lift this thing I'm holding my hands. Uh, lift this? Yeah, just keep it, like, so I can, yeah, but lower it. Okay. You can just sit off. Can I just sit on you? Yep, the camera's on, so that's cool. No, <laughs> all right, lower, lower. Lower. All right, right there. Okay. All right, just hold it right there for a second. Okay. So I think the viewers that are going to see this, I can hear you right now. Oh, really? Are going to appreciate what a... Be much more willing to work on their jeeps if it all happened like this <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is a family channel <gasps> no it's not yeah maybe i don't know we'll find out okay <laughs> i know buddy i know i got two helpers now so yes that was my wife and yes she is much harder than i am all right guys, just a quick tip. So the instructions are gonna tell you to attach the back two bolts of the skid plate to the skid plate brackets. But don't do that because if you can, if you do do that, I found it's almost impossible to get the five bolts on the front end of the skid plate that attach to the actual bumper um, to attach. I have bigger fingers. I can't reach in those little tiny holes. Anyways, insert joke here. So what I did was I did insert the first bolt onto the bumper through the W, right up right up the W. And then now I kind of have like this rotating skid plate that can move as I freely want to and I can get the two ends. Do that first and then put the two bolts in the back on. Okay. So this is an awkward position I understand, but we're almost there guys. 37 pounds of torque guys. Hey guys. Day two of this install, couldn't finish it last night. The image quality for the video was horrible and I didn't want to do it to you guys. I uh, just got back from work, so I'm just gonna finish off the last couple details for this build. Uh, so what we have left is we simply just need to wire up this winch to the battery and install the synthetic rope cable that I have for uh, the winch. So let's get going. All right guys, so I've wired the winch uh, with both its cables going underneath the grill, over a frame rail, and up in between the uh, air filter box and the battery. So it's coming up right here. Got the two leads right here, and now we're gonna secure them to each side here. So I just noticed something, or I just remembered something. Um, I didn't mount the synthetic rope while the winch was out. Um, I thought it'd be easy enough to do it while it's in. Most of the videos I saw did it while it was in, um, but a lot of them weren't snug as, as in such a tight fit as this one is. I already have the winch in. I got the cables routed. I really don't want to pull it out if I don't have to. So I'm going to give it a shot just like this and see what happens. So let's go. So there are a lot of videos online that'll show you how to properly install a synthetic rope on a winch. So I'm just going to briefly cover it here. But what you're going to want to do is take the synthetic rope and wrap it around the winch drum very loosely, like half a time. You're going to take the end of the rope and thread this metal cord you see in my hand through it and try to pull the rope through the hole in the drum like I'm doing. Then you take this wedge I have here and put it in the eye of the, of the rope, wedge it in there, and then essentially pull on the rope as hard as you possibly can until it gets stuck in there. All right guys, so the last thing we have to do is spool the synthetic rope around the winch drum. Luckily I have the Warren Xeon 10S Platinum Edition winch here, so no more uh, manual clutch, no more plugging in a remote control to the side. It's all wireless now and it's pretty freaking amazing. Woo, 
didn't think I'd ever get that done. It's not too bad looking. It was getting kind of sketchy there for a while. I was kind of afraid how bad it was going to look. And just like that, guys, we're done. It was pretty easy besides the winch, the bumper, and the skid plate. So, you know, who am I kidding? This was my first time ever doing this. You guys know I'm a noob. It's definitely a challenge, but I'm super proud standing here looking at it now. I think it looks awesome. I'm really excited to get out on the trail and test it out. Still need to pre-tension this synthetic rope. Don't forget to do that um, or else it'll crush itself the first time you use it. Hope to do a lot more of these. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more of our trek and our path to Utah, click that follow button, subscribe. If you just got done installing this like I did, do what I'm about to do. Grab a beer and admire your handiwork.